continue with some of the role of the components in the high level battery pack when it comes to electronics so the electronics used at module and pack level are like for charging and discharge monitoring we use bmu which is called as battery monitoring unit which is used at uh, module level uh, basically uh, bmu and bcu are something which are used for high voltage applications only because bms would be limited with limited number of channels whereas bcu and bmu would give that flexibility to use more number of cells in a battery pack and it can eventually monitor it as a master bms or a slave bms that we would discuss in the third week but let's continue with this how and each function of this components are like BMU it's a battery monitoring unit it just monitors the cell and all this information is transferred to the BCU which is a battery control unit and then we have BMS which is a single board for low voltage applications this is commonly used for battery packs which is less than 60 volts and then for communication we will be using a CAN based communication this is one of the features of BMS which is used for communicating with the can so this is uh, something which is common which is of high importance in a battery pack to understand what is the status of the battery pack and then for safety and uh, control we use pre-charged circuits uh, this is one of the unique feature which is used in high voltage battery pack which usually consists of resistors and contactors so this is to avoid the high inrush current which is coming from the battery pack so that it doesn't damage the vehicle side controllers and motors when the ignition is turned on so this is one uh, safety feature that has to be included in a battery pack and it is quite essential to do that and we'll discuss this about this in the coming slides and uh, other el electrical and wiring components are like at voltage level at uh, module level we have uh, voltage and current sensors which are used to monitor the current and voltage levels of every cell so this voltage uh, sensor goes and it is fixed on every cell which is in series connection so it is to monitor and all these voltage and current sensors go to the BMS from the BMS that is how when you program the BMS with certain voltage cutoffs, voltage limitations you say instead of 2.5 to start you will start with 2.65 only that is where this voltage sensor will play a role so this voltage sensor senses the voltage of the cell and the moment it reaches that certain set voltage the BMS would take an action to start discharging or to stop charging and all. And then we have temperature sensors which are also called as the NTC sensors. So these NTC sensors are used to measure the temperatures of the whole uh, battery pack wherever we have hot spots wherever uh, we have high temperatures zones forming on the module or at a pack level the NTC sensors are detecting that and that information is translated to the BMS so that the BMS can take its action to stop operation uh, if the temperatures are quite high and then at pack level we have current sensor so this current sensor is something to understand how much of current is being drawn and how much of current is allowed to draw and this current sensor is actually in, again in contact with the BMS to transfer the information continuously if there is any high current coming up and if the pack is not designed to do that it will immediately send a signal to terminate and we also have other safety monitoring device like manual service disconnect and uh, high power contactors and high cables so manual service disconnect is something which is needed to break the voltage loop whenever this is being serviced or whenever the big battery pack is being shipped whenever the whole work or maintenance work on this battery pack is done the final assembly happens and then this manual service disconnect is plugged in so that the loop is closed so until that the first thing to start before opening a pack is to plug out the manual service disconnect this is just a plug you can remove it easily and you can place it easily so it is manual service disconnect which also is one of the important component for servicing aspect by now we have talked about different modules what are the series and panel combination what is the thermal loop design what are the cell chemistry cell form factors etc so suppose we have made a very good module we have made a very good thermal design everything seems great we have fit into the right place we have placed all the components etc but what if the power cable is not right because ultimately the power to be drawn is through the power cable if that is not done right the whole essence of making the grid battery pack goes in vain so it is very important to also choose the right power cable for a battery pack so now here we will understand why we need to choose the right power cable so since the power cable would be the final medium through which the power is delivered the power cable has to be selected that it can deliver 1C or 2C or 3C or any current that the pack has to be delivered for the designated time like for example if the pack is designed or if the cell is chosen to deliver 5C for 30 seconds 
the power cable should also be able to deliver that without overheating or without melting or without leading to fire. So that is something which has to be done. So usually these power cables can be copper or aluminium. They also can be evaluated like using the Ohm's law which is V is equal to IR. Uh, so when we select a wire uh, or the area of the wire, the diameter of the wire, we should be also considering the resistance of the wire so that it has lower resistance. Higher resistance will always lead to increase in the temperature and also it should be taken care that the length of the wire should be such that there is no significant voltage drop because uh, being a high voltage system where the dimensions are 1 meter or more than 1.5 meters, you have long wires running around and that kind of wire should not be leading to voltage drops. So this selection of wire and power cables and all has been a great tradition till now and, and uh, there are a lot of uh, information that you could find on internet as well regarding the right wire for the right current rating which you would require. So which is designated as AWG which is called as American Wire Gauge. By using this standard you can choose the right diameter of the wire. Uh, which it would be able to carry the right capacity and also there is a table in the next slide which will give you information on the insulated wires information for different temperatures like 45 degrees, 60 degrees and 90 degrees which will help you in identifying the right wire for the right power delivery. So here is that we have American wire gauge chart over here where it starts from wire gauge 4 by 0 or 4 zeros. It goes up to 30 uh, AWG. If you observe over here, you could see that the wire gauge, uh, the first one 0, 0, 0, 4 zeros, has a, a diameter of 11.6 mm whereas a wire gauge of 30 has 0 0.28 which means the lower the wire gauge, the diameter of the wire gauge increases and, uh, and also if you could see the resistance per unit length which is leading to the voltage drop. You can calculate it over here. This requires a little bit of understanding on electronic resistivity, electrical resistance and also the area diameter used. I would leave that small exercise for you to do that. But over here if you see the resistance per unit length also increases as your diameter of the wire reduces. That is where you see you need to have a very good area for conducting or transmitting a good amount of current through these wires. So if you have a wire of 4 by O, which is at 60 degrees centigrade rating, it can deliver a amp city of 195. Similarly, if you have it at 75 degrees, it can deliver at amp city of 230. And at 90 degrees, it can deliver at uh, 260 amp city. So that means you need to have a wire which is having a suitable insulation material which can resist 90 degrees, it can deliver up to 260 amperes. If you don't have a sufficient insulation material for the wire, then it can fall. You need to choose the right insulation material for your wire so that it can deliver as much as current as possible. That if your temperatures are high, if you are operating, that means uh, for example, if you are continuously constantly delivering 2C, 3C current, which means your uh, copper wires are always high, and if you are at 75 degrees temperature and you have insulation of 60 degrees, it will not deliver 230, it will deliver 195 because it will have its own limitations, it will not be able to conduct out heat properly, it will probably melt slowly and it can catch fire as well. So that is something which you will have to understand. You need to choose the right insulation material for your wire conductor. Uh, and uh, you need to find out what would be the temperature rise in that in that wire when the current is passed through it and then only you can deliver 260. But this looks quite uh, impressive, this kind of current where it can handle at 90 degrees uh, centigrade insulation material for the wire is good. Like you need to choose the right power, right current, right temperature, right insulation material and right length so that you don't have much voltage drop. You don't uh, witness any problems, many any problems over the coming life cycles that the pack has to be delivered throughout. So yes, by this we come to the end of the session. So to summarize and all, I firstly believe, I hope you had a good session. You might have understand well all these things. So what we discussed on was like, what are the major differences between lithium ion cell form factors? What are those advantages and disadvantages? And what are the chemistries of lithium ion cells? How these cells are converted to modules and then to packs? What are the differences between the module and pack conversion with respect to cell form factors? What are the 
important considerations that has to be considered when we select a cell for a specific application. What are the different bomb parts uh, in a module design and what significance it plays and what are the series and parallel combinations in the module and how do we connect the cells in series and parallel combination, what are those things that needs to be addressed when we connect those modules in pack etc and we also we understood like how cooling plates are to be derived at etc so in short this is how this session would be i hope this would be very useful to you these are some of the image credits uh, thanks to all these uh, oems who have helped us so that we could get a better explanation on all the things which we have